Uh, just a few words before we uh, get going um, this morning. Um, we have a new camera. And um, so, so we're, we're, this, is, this is kind of our <laughs> trial run. Um, you can see up there for the folks who are in place that uh, shows a different place. We don't have this obnoxious thing sitting up here. Um, for those of you who are watching remotely, uh, and, and for those of you who are here who are seeing a little screen, you will see it moving around um, to, to kind of follow the action. Um, so we're hoping that it all works. Uh, this is our sort of our trial run. Uh, and uh, at this point, I'm going to mute, um, mute all, all the folks that are at home, and uh, we'll hope that this works. We'll look forward to hearing your feedback afterwards, especially those who are um, connecting remotely. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
<clears throat> Today is the first Sunday of Advent, a time of expectancy and holiness as we prepare for Christmas. The word Advent means the coming or that which is coming. This is the time in the church year when Christians remember and celebrate the promises of God. Come, Lord Jesus, be our light in the darkness. In today's Old Testament reading, the prophet Jeremiah speaks of God's continuing promise to the people who have been living in exile in Babylon. Jeremiah delivers a message of hope to a people who are returning to the city of Jerusalem, which is in ruins. Come, Lord Jesus, be our light in the darkness. God promises to keep his covenant with the people, even though they have betrayed God in the past. God will cause a righteous branch to spring up, a righteous branch of the royal line of the King David. Through this branch, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. Come, Lord Jesus, be our light in the darkness. <laughs> we light this candle, the first candle of Advent, to remind us that God will fulfill the promises he makes with his people if they will live lives of justice and faithfulness. The light of this candle will lead us through the darkness of life towards Bethlehem, where we will meet the baby Jesus on Christmas Day. Come, Lord Jesus, be our light in the darkness. May this candle remind us to hope for God, to fulfill the promises God has made to his people. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill my gracious promise with the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous branch from David's line who will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is what he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Our psalm today comes from Psalm 25. Let's read it responsibly by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. But let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treasures be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you shall I trust it all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are for us. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the Lord. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To 
A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you, given all the joy we have because of you before our God? Night and day, we pray more than ever to see all of you in person and to complete whatever you still need for your faith. Now may our God and Father himself guide us on our way back to you. May the Lord cause you to increase and enrich your love for each other and for everyone in the same way as we also love you. May the love cause your hearts to be strengthened, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his people. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, there will be dismay among nations in their confusion over the roaring of the sea and surging waves. The planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken, causing people to faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. Then they will see the human one coming on a cloud with power and great splendor. Now when these things begin to happen, stand up straight and raise your heads because your redemption is near. Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that God's kingdom is near. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until everything has happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. Take care that your hearts aren't dulled by drinking parties, drunkenness, and the anxieties of day-to-day -day life. Don't let that day fall upon you unexpectedly like a trap. It will come upon everyone who lives on the face of the whole earth. Stay, away, alert, <clears throat> stay alert at all times, praying that you are strong enough to escape everything that is about to happen and to stand before the human <clears throat> world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Amén. Uh, one January evening in 1892, an artist went for a walk near his home with a couple of friends. As he later described the event, the sun was setting. Suddenly the sky turned blood red. I paused, feeling exhausted, and leaned on the fence. There was blood and tongues of fire above the blue-black fjord and the city. My friends walked on and I stood there trembling with anxiety and I sensed an infinite scream passing through nature. The artist of course was the Norwegian Edvard Munch and the product of that evening stroll was the scream painted in 1893. Art historians and commentators have puzzled over the reasons why Munch produced such a vivid painting. One theory suggests that there were changes in atmospheric conditions, even in Norway, following the eruption of Krakatoa. Others, once the precise location of the painting was determined, have speculated that Munch was despairing because of the proximity of both a slaughterhouse and a nearby mental hospital, a hospital where his sister had just been confined. Regardless of how the signs of Munch's times might be read, according to commentator Zuzana Stanska, the scream is one of the most famous paintings in the world. It's pretty obvious why. Its expression and the way the pain and the anxiety of the man are depicted is universal for all human beings. We have all, at least once in our lives, felt this way. We have not only wanted to scream publicly, we have felt like the whole world around us was bursting. The scream became the symbol of the condition of the modern person, lost, stressed, threatened by the world and his or her own thoughts. I'm not so sure about Stanska's characterization of the figure in the scream as being the modern person. Yes, since the 1890s, there has been a lot of change and uncertainty. The last 130 years have seen two world wars and dozens of smaller conflicts, numerous plagues, floods, and earthquakes. The social and religious upheavals brought on by Charles Darwin's 1859 book on the origin of species were and are still being felt. Industry, engineering, and technology have changed at a breakneck pace. When Munch was painting, most people traveled by horse and buggy, perhaps by train. And now we're sending a rocket into space in order to nudge an asteroid to change course. In short, the modern person hardly knows where to stand anymore. 30 years after Munch put brush to paper, another marker of the decline of certainty, the disaster that was World War I, prompted poet T.S. Eliot to write The Wasteland, whose main theme is the decline of all the old certainties that had previously held Western society together. This caused society to break up and there was no going back. All that was left to do was to salvage broken cultural fragments from a vanished past. 25 years later, that same uncertainty was taken up by W.H. Auden in his Pulitzer Prize winning work, The Age of Anxiety. A poem highlighting human isolation, a condition magnified by the lack of tradition or religious belief in the modern age. After exploring the spiritual emptiness, the loneliness and the anxiety-ridden purposelessness of the poem's characters' lives, the poem simply ends at dawn on the streets of New York City. Almost immediately, Auden's poem and its title became the inspiration for American Jewish composer Leonard Bernstein's Second Symphony, a major piano and orchestral work titled 
the age of anxiety. Composed in 1948 and 1949. Bernstein, along with addressing the issues explored by Auden, was also trying to come to grips himself with World War II, the Holocaust, and all of the certainties called into question by those tragedies. But Auden in his poem also provided inspiration for an examination, not just of the present, but of the past. A friend of Auden's, the notable scholar of Greek and Latin history, E.R. Dodds, took the themes of societal disruption and uncertainties and applied them to the world of the Roman Empire, specifically the period between the accession of Emperor Marcus Aurelius in 161 and the conversion of Constantine, 150 years later. In a book titled Pagan and Christian in an Age of Anxiety, Dodds argued that during those 150 years, material decline was steepest and the ferment of new religious feelings most intense. It was an age of anxiety in both its material and its moral insecurity. The Pax Romana was coming to an end and being succeeded by invasions, epidemics, and civil disorder. The scream, I think, then can easily be the symbol of the condition of almost all people throughout history, lost, stressed, threatened by the world and his or, own, his or her own thoughts, as Stanska wrote. Even a brief analysis of our contemporary situation would see it applicable to our world. And it also represents the times reflected in our readings this morning. The difference, however, is that I don't think our readings leave the screamer screaming. In that difference lies our Advent hope. Jeremiah spoke the word of the Lord to the remnant of a very frightened and disoriented Jewish people. Everything that had given them meaning was gone. The temple was destroyed. Jerusalem was gone. And many of the people had been exiled to Babylon. Jeremiah had just counseled them to make the best of a bad situation. To put down roots in Babylon. But how could they do that? In the words of the exilic psalm, by the rivers of Babylon, we laid down our harps. How could we possibly sing the Lord's song on foreign soil? To that people, Jeremiah proclaims, the time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill my gracious promise with the people of Israel and Judah. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. There is uncertainty. There is upheaval, there is darkness, but God is faithful. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians was written to a group of Gentiles who had left all that had given them meaning, that is their pagan gods and practices, to become Christians. That change in religiosity brought pressure from their neighbors to revert to their own old ways. As the author of 1 Peter wrote, they think it's strange you don't join in these activities with the same flood of unrestrained wickedness, so they slander you. Add to that pressure, the uncertainty they faced when trying to understand what would become of their family members who died before the expected return of Jesus, one can imagine their anxiety. To them, Paul writes words of hope and the power of Christian community. May the Lord cause you to increase and enrich your love for each other and for everyone in the same way as we also love you. May the love cause your hearts to be strengthened, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his people. Luke's gospel, of course, was written after another destruction of the temple the dispersion of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, as well as the expansion of a Jewish sect into an international religion. The old certainties of a religion tied to a place and to a particular ethnicity were cast aside. It was as if the heavens were coming apart. 
The image of the roaring of the sea and surging waves recalls the chaos of creation. Yet in the midst of all this, Jesus provides assurance. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words certainly will not pass away. But it was assurance with some associated demands, stay alert, don't become complacent. There is still work to do. Your hope can translate into hope for others. The scream speaks to a lot of us, to a lot of our contemporaries. The fact that there are so many references in popular culture to the scream is just one indication. The upheavals we have experienced for decades, as well as those that have beset us over the last decade, have brought upon us our own age of anxiety. And that age is marked by figurative, and in some case, actual wars, shaking of foundations, overwhelming changes, isolation, loneliness. And this was in the paper this morning. It's not become parents, it's too frightening a world. We are frightened. We are uncertain. We are the Jews of Babylon, the Jews of late first century Jerusalem. We are those early Christians wondering if it's all worth it or if we should just capitulate to the culture around us. And the answer we are given throughout our scriptures is no, God is still God. God is faithful. God holds out hope and promise. And God asks us to join in recreating a fallen, frightful world into something that is just and beautiful. The signs around us are not the ultimate reality. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. Yesterday afternoon, realizing I could find it on YouTube, I re-listened to Bernstein's Second Symphony. I'd forgotten that at the end, Bernstein brings in orchestral bells. Intended or not, I heard them as church bells in the midst of anxiety. At the end of that work, as is often the case with Bernstein, there is musical hope. There is visual hope too in our observance of Advent. We are marching in our movement towards Christmas into the darkest time of our calendar year. Yet at the same time, we light another candle every week as a reminder that as things get darker, our faith provides continual light. Every year we are reminded that the light of Christ will overcome the powers of darkness. Every year we are reminded too that we have a role in making that happen. As evocative as the scream is, it is not the final painting. The age of anxiety does not fully define the present and certainly not the age to come. That age is in God's hands as God's partners in making it real for an anxious world. However, it is in ours as well. Amen. <laughs> As you are able, I invite you to stand, <clears throat> join with one another in the confession of our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Prayers of the people are found in your bulletin insert and on the screen. Please respond to each building, each bidding as shown in bold print. My brothers and sisters, may God strengthen your hearts in holiness. Trusting in God, let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We are our hope and our salvation. God, our hope, usher in your reign of justice and righteousness. May all the world know your peace and safety. We pray especially for Joseph, our president, Jared, our governor, for our legislators and courts. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Be our hope and our God, our hope, you place signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Give us the eyes to see the wisdom to prepare, and the faith to trust in you. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We are our hope and our salvation. God, our hope, under your reign, under you, reign divisions are overcome. Unity resort, restored. Bring the people of this region from city, village, and town together in a spirit of love and respect. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Kim, our bishop, Gary, our rector, and Nadine, our deacon. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Be our hope and our salvation. God, our hope, remember your compassion and love. Heal and restore the sick and the suffering, the anxious and the grieving. We pray especially for O come, O come, Emmanuel. We are hope in our salvation. God, our hope, keep us blameless before you that we may meet the coming of the Lord Jesus with joy. May we and all who have died rise to life immortal with all your saints. We pray for those who have recently died and those we now name. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Be our hope and our salvation. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come in weakness and in power to reveal our sin and shame. Come, set us free to worship without fear, and guide us on the road to peace. Come, shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Come and make all things new in our lives, our labors, and our world. Come, save us now in life and death, and in the great and final day. Come, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we have no for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And peace to everyone who is joining us uh, remotely. Things, things seem to be going okay. <laughs> Welcome to you all. Um, glad you are here this morning on this first Sunday of Advent. Um, and I said, I, I said to myself, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Happy New Year! Um, uh, I can't, I can't help myself. Um, please, after the service, head into the um, into the parish hall for coffee, and then come back um, at nine fifteen uh, here for Faith Forum. We will be starting our Lenten or Lenten Advent series on practicing patience. Um, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, this is the first day that it happens, so you won't have missed anything. There wasn't any advanced work or anything, so just come on in and we'll engage in that <clears throat> discussion. Next Sunday at the 1030 service, um, the choir and uh, additional resources um, will uh, present uh, the, a gospel magnificat. Um, it will be unlike anything that we have done here before, or at least in recent memory. It will be a lot of fun. Um, that doesn't mean you can't be here at, at um, 7.45, but you can come back at 10.30 um, before that. And uh, it, it should, like I say, it should be a lot of fun. We've got an ensemble and the choir and, and all sorts of things. So um, the, the, our, our uh, Advent gift to, to the congregation. Another Advent gift, not just to the congregation, but to the wider neighborhood, will be our living nativity on uh, the following Saturday, Saturday the 11th, uh, December 11th, um, from 4.30 to 6.30. Uh, drive through, bring um, some, uh, some canned goods and things like that, non-perishable food for Covenant Covered. Um, we will get that to them and then uh, just drive around and see all of us who are dressed up as various characters from the nativity, some of us more characters than others. <laughs> um, also, uh, after our discussion last week, um, following this service um, online, we decided that we would add another Christmas Eve service at two o'clock in the afternoon. It will be done from here and it will be a Zoom service. All of the music will be pre-recorded. So, you can come and you're welcome to sing along, uh, but it will all be recorded. We will not have anybody. It will just be me and whoever's here and a, and a reader. Um, but it would be primarily for those folks who, will, uh, who would be otherwise unable to join us for any of the, the Christmas celebrations. But it will be a Zoom Eucharist. So if you want Eucharist, that will, that will be here as well. So that will be Christmas Eve at two. And then there will be the four o'clock pageant and then the nine o'clock uh, traditional Christmas Eve service. And then just a reminder, keep those pledges coming. Are there birthdays or anniversaries to observe this morning? Then let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord.
All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own be given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <clears throat> thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Andrew, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food for the most precious body and blood we you have sent our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer and his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.
rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.